In 1939, Smith Wigglesworth prophesied to Lester Sumrall about the final wave of God's glory. After that, after the third wave, he said, he started to sob as the Spirit of God got around his life. I see the last day revival is going to usher in the precious fruit of the earth. It will be the greatest revival this world has ever seen. It's going to be a wave of the gifts of the Spirit. The ministry gifts will be flowing on planet Earth. I see hospitals being emptied out. They will bring the sick to churches. They'll bring the sick to the churches where they allow the Holy Ghost to move. Amen? Ladies and gentlemen, I make no excuse. We want the Holy Spirit to move in this church. Amen? We want the gifts of the Spirit. We want the presence of God. We will linger in the presence of God. We will just let the presence of God have His way. We will let Jesus do whatever He wants to do whenever He wants to do it. Amen? And, uh, you know, I'm believing that, you know, that when the Spirit of God really comes, that time will not mean a thing to us. We'll be so lost. And a little bit like, like Tom this morning, it just that spirit of worship that gets in, inside of you. And not everybody might have, might, might have felt what Tom was feeling. Not, not everybody might have been experiencing the presence of God. Some might have been saying, ah, this is, you know, it's going too long or something like that, looking at your clock. But you see, when the spirit of it gets on you, it changes everything. And uh, I believe that, that there is going to be a great revival. And we've been speaking a lot about the things that hinder us from entering into what God has uh, been doing on this planet and in our church and around Australia. So, Father, we come to you today with great expectation. My God, we come today with hearts full of gratitude. And, and Lord, you, you, just been so, you have been so good to us. You, you have been amazing because you, you've pulled us out of the miry clay of You've touched us in a special way, my God, and for that we're very, very thankful. And so this morning today, Father, I pray that, Lord, you would anoint me, my God, that the anointing would, would touch people. You'd, you'd give people ears to hear, what, not what Neil's saying, but what the Spirit is saying. Lord, take them beyond man's ability into the realm of the Spirit that would open up things to them and reveal things to them and show them areas of their life that, that where, the, where perhaps they've not made room for you. Whatever it is, my God, today, I, I pray for this church. I pray for this people. I pray, my God, that today that you would, you would just touch us in a special, special way and we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. God can and will do it again. <laughs> that's, the, the, that's the thing that you've got to get inside you. You've got to have foundation to jump off if you if you don't if you're not sure if you don't know what's going on if negativity failure can get inside us well then we've got nothing to stand on but when you've got something solid to stand on and you, and you just say god you can do it again you can and you will do it again why because you said you'd do it again you said you'd pour out your spirit and we've been sharing a lot today and i'm just going to read the scripture again to you so as that we can really grasp it. And, 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 and to me, it, it's, it's, it, it's challenged my life because I, 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 I'm getting so much out of this, just these couple of verses. And it says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Too often we try to war in the flesh and work it out in the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Jack this morning in the prayer time, he said he felt that people had like a chain around their neck, something there that was stopping them from, from entering in. And friend, can I say this? You can be a Christian 50 years and still have a chain around your neck. You can be, you know, things that have got around us, things that have affected us, things that have, that have you know, stopped us from being what God wants us to be. And, you know, we can just say, oh, you know, I, I, that's not me, but many times it can be me. It can be me. 
there, there's areas in my life where, where I've, I know there's been restriction. But I want to tell you this, that, that God is setting us free. Amen. I, I was shy. I, I had a lot of things wrong with me in the beginning. But God, little by little, is helping me. Amen. Verse 5 says, Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Isn't that an amazing scripture? That is amazing. The weapons of your warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. God will set us free. He, if he can get, get it to us, he will do it. Amen. And uh, that's what it's all about today. God has given us weapons of war for pull, to pull down strongholds in our lives, in our city, in our, in our nation. Spiritual weapons, not natural weapons. Not anger, not bitterness, spiritual weapons. We've been sharing about these areas in our lives where the enemy will try to attack us. He will attack us if he can. He'll do whatever he can. One of, one of Satan's cunning devices that I'm going to share on this morning is that he wants to mess with our emotions. Our emotions. Now, some emotions are really, really good, okay? It's good. I, I can remember when I was uh, about 15 or 16 and I met a young lass by the name of Nancy. And uh, I tell you what, zing went the strings of my heart and my emotions went off the chart. <laughs> and uh, I can remember even when, a bit late, when I was 17, I had my motorbike and I hadn't had it, had it too long, but I was driving up Flinders Street in Townsville and uh, she was coming out of the, um, some main big building. She worked in a solicitor's office. And I spotted her coming out of it. I'm getting goosebumps think, talking about this now, to be honest with you. And, um, and uh, I spotted her there. And, and I got so taken up that I, I ran my motorbike into the back of a police car. So, you know, some things, emotions are good, uh, but there's some that where our emotions will let us down unless we uh, build our faith on a solid foundation. I'm just talking about where the enemy gets our emotions. And I want to just read another scripture that's found in the book of Romans. And I think that we all know these scriptures only too well. Romans chapter 12. And um, where do I find it here? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, that you may be able to prove what is that good. What is, what is the will of God for your life? What is the... What, what's acceptable? And I, and I believe that that's where we're at in our lives in many areas, that, that the, our, found, our, our, our emotions take us out into somewhere out there where, where we find that there's no way out. The enemy can have a field day with our emotions. We might start thinking like, no one cares for me. No one loves me. You know, a lot of, that's where a lot of people end up in suicide, suicidal thoughts when they start to, their emotions just get messed up and they start to think wrong. Our emotions are up and down. Has anybody here ever played the game called Snakes and Ladders? How many people know that game? None of the young people. Oh, the young people know it too. Because, you know, you're going really, really well and the, you, you, you're going up and up and up and up and all of a sudden you hit one of those snakes. <laughs> And usually it's a long one. <laughs> and it takes you right back to where you started from. And, you know, that's what our emotions can be like. That's what our life can be like. Up and down, up and down. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but there's a lot of Christians live like that. Sometimes hallelujah, sometimes praise the Lord. Sometimes they're up there worshiping God, and next time you see them, they're in mully grubs. They're having misery time. They're, they're, they're broken. 
I've said a lot about this late, lately, but we must know what God says about the circumstances in our life and hold on. We had an old saying once, when you get to the end of the rope, tie a knot in it and hang on. <laughs> because if you can hang on, God will get you through. If you can somehow or other let God touch you. Don't listen to the enemy's lies. You know, sometimes your best friend can give you bad advice. I remember when I first got saved, my best mate, he was really, worry, really, really worried about me because he said, Neil's got religion. And he did everything he could to get me out of what I was doing. See, sometimes even if your best friend accidentally gives you poison, it'll still kill you. You've got to be careful who you listen to. Let's just let's look at it a bit. The New Testament church, it was birthed on the day of Pentecost. It was birthed with a blaze of glory, power, signs and wonders. Can you, can, how many people would have loved to have been there like that in that time? But you see, what we've got to realize, that because of that, it didn't mean that they would never have another problem. See, Christianity sometimes in our mind can be just this tiptoeing through the tulips with tiny Tim. You know, now I'm saved. I've got, I put on the armor of God and I'm, here I am. I, you know, I'm fireproof. I'm this proof. I, devil can't touch me. And, and all of a sudden, things start going wrong. And we start thinking, well, what's wrong with God? Why did God allow this? And of course, you know, old Hairy Legs, he's the one that's feeding you all this rubbish. He's telling you God doesn't love you. God doesn't care about you. He's telling you that, you know, what, the, what God says isn't true. The word of God isn't true. And you, and you hear people there trying to disprove the word of God. Trying to make, you know, we hear people making jokes about it and different things. And, but you see, what we've got to understand is that the enemy comes in to rob, to kill, and destroy didn't mean, mean that they would never, ever have a problem. But what it meant was that they now had the power to overcome it. And that's where we as Christians get off track. Because you see, when your emotions knock, you, the, the bias is so strong that we just go into negativity and failure. And that's all we can think about. That's, uh, and, and because we're moving that way, we can't get back on track. And that's why I believe that God says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Where you can come amongst a bunch of people there that, that might speak a bit of positivity, where you might get a word from God or, or whether God might drop something into you that, that, we, that, you know, that picks you up or you come on an altar and, and the power of God delivers you and sets you free from wrong thinking and wrong goodness knows what else. Because you see, our emotions will take us that. didn't mean that they wouldn't have another problem. But let me say it again. It meant that now they had the power to overcome it. Many don't fight. But you've got to remember the scripture that we're working with. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, you are in a warfare whether you want to believe it or not. There's a war raging. There's an enemy that's trying to steal from you. There's an enemy that, that tries to, to get inside your thinking. The enemy sometimes, all, in our emotions, they don't fight because in their emotions, the enemy's already taken over. There's no way out. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, that day, something started. And there's things there that you've got to indelibly print into your thinking that when the enemy does come, that you can begin to rise up. You can begin to, 
to, to, to fight that thing. You can begin, to, even if you just stand and start speaking in tongues or whatever it might be, but you can start to fight that thing. You've got to, be, you've got to remember that these things that, that God has given us are very, very real. On that day of Pentecost, that great day, something started that can never, ever, 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 ever be reversed. Something started that day. The church was birthed, yes, in power and glory. It was birthed, but something started, and what God started, he will not stop. And what we've got to understand is when you're fighting, you just say, God, your Holy Spirit is still being poured out. And everything that, that I need, you've given me everything that, that I need to overcome and be victorious over the works of Satan. No weapon formed against me can prosper. And every tongue and every devil that rises against me in judgment, I will condemn. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so you begin to rise up in the realm of the Spirit. You begin to say these sort of things because what God started, He will not stop. Amen. What God started in the beginning, He will stop. Just like Tom, many, many years ago, God got a word. It doesn't mean that, that it's past, it's used by date. <laughs> it's very, very much alive because that word is for a now word. That is a now thing that we've got to be able to do. God poured, not trickled, amen. God poured out his spirit on all mankind. That makes me, hallelujah, a candidate. Whether I deserved it or not, whether I was good enough or not, while I was yet a sinner, God died for me. There's nothing in this world that exempts me from what God says in his word. There's no sin, there's nothing. God wants to deliver me from sin. I've heard people when we're on altars and been praying for people for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and they're praying for them and they're going on and blah, 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 and, and they're telling them to say hallelujah fast and they're trying to sell them to get something else fast and, and the people can't come through, they just can't seem to break through and then the person stands back and says, well, it must be sin in your life. And oh man, that, that, oh, I went over and, you know, don't talk like that. There's no, you see, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I had sin in my life. I needed the Holy Ghost to deliver me from the sin. Amen. I needed the power of God. I, I didn't have to wait till I got perfect to get filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I needed the Holy Ghost while I was yet messed up and, and, and doing things that I shouldn't do. But right now you get under the spout where the glory comes out, amen. And, and, and you just say, God, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. God, whatever you said in your word, it's yea and amen. And Lord, we're going to fight these things. We're going to smash these things. We're going to break through. I'm not going to let my emotions mess up my life. Emotions can get on the inside of you. But let me say this again too. God poured out of his spirit. Something that started on the day of Pentecost, it will never be reversed. It can never be stopped. I, I heard the other day that, that Niagara Falls froze over. And that concerned me a little bit. Because <laughs> I thought that was impossible. But then I heard that even though it was frozen on the outside, it was still running on the inside, amen. <laughs> it was still being poured out on the inside. And your life, it made me feel like you're like the Ni Niagara Falls and, and the enemies come in and you're frozen over and you feel like there's nothing happening. But I want to tell you, deep down on the inside, it's still flowing, hallelujah. It's still flowing towards you this morning. And you can just jump in right now. You can jump into the river. You can jump into God's great provision. The church was in... It was endowed with power from on high. 
So you see, when Neil got saved, when you got saved, and when the Holy Spirit got around your life and came into your life, you were endowed with that same power, amen. Though modern Christianity has watered it down, today, if you want to get saved, raise your hand or don't even raise your hand, but go back to the desk at the back and we'll give you a free cappuccino. How can you get saved like that? I know one person who got saved every week for the first six weeks so you get a free cappuccino. Dewed with power from on high, a rushing mighty wind filled the whole place where they were seated. It's not hit and miss. The whole 120 in that upper room got touched by a supernatural manifestation of God. They were all, it wasn't, it's not hit and miss. It's not all oh, you're good enough so you can get it. I've heard people say, I'm God's favorite. Well, that's true, but all of us are God's favorite. Amen? God's no respecter of persons, Tom said this morning. It's very, very real. God loves every one of us. He died for every one of us. His desire is that every one of us would rise up and, and, and be victorious and rule and reign with him. Amen. Allow the king of glory to come in. A, a mighty rushing wind came into my heart, into my life, and filled me and touched me. The whole place was filled. Tongues of fire. They're all empowered by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Do you good today to say, I'm empowered by the power of the mighty Holy Spirit. I'm empowered by the power of God, amen. I am not an accident looking for a place to happen. I am more than a conqueror, hallelujah. Be bold, speak strong about yourself. Don't let your emotions say, hey, don't go down grumble alley. Who was that singer walking down the street of regret? Elvis Presley. He's worried about who don't stand on my blue stone shoe. We're all, you see, we're all empowered by, by the same mighty Holy Ghost. You see, I, I wonder, perhaps it was the same fire that went before them when they came out of Egypt. I wonder if the fire that came upon them that day and the fire that came upon you and me that day when we received the Holy Spirit was the same fire that was in the burning bush. It did not consume them. Let me say this, God is in the fire. Now that same fire, that same power rests on us. Can you catch my drift here today? I'm trying to get our thinking to think differently. Because if the enemy can get into our emotions and we start thinking wrong and thinking negative and, and miserable and goodness knows what, you can't find your way out. But I want to tell you there's one thing that will help you out more than anything else. It's called the anointing. My Bible says the anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing will break the yoke. And sometimes just sitting in a meeting, sitting there, and, and all of a sudden, the, though you don't know, but the anointing just gets around your life and it starts to break things. And, you, and all of a sudden you, you can't perhaps understand, but why do I feel like this? Why do I feel different? Because the Holy Ghost got around your life. Amen. The anointing breaks the yoke. Breaks the yoke. I want to remind you again, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. Problems won't disappear from our life when we get born again, but we have got the power of God to deal with them. If you don't write anything else down today, write that down. Get that into you. 
Our emotions get in the way. We start to doubt even God's existence. You know, as, as a Christian for many years, sometimes when things get around, you start to doubt God's existence. Am I the only person here that's like that from time to time? Start to doubt his existence. Many people back, backslide, walk away from God. You can say doubt his existence. When we have a problem, we think this shouldn't happen to me. We think wrong. I must have done something wrong. God doesn't love me. Just let me remind you about the early days of Pentecost. And, and really, the, the church in the beginning was the, was the pure church, if I can put it that way. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were, they were all just in one accord and full of the Holy Ghost and full of power. And the anointing was just flowing like a, like a river and people were being healed and people were being touched. One day, Peter stands up and declares, these men are not drunk. As you suppose, that's in Acts 2, 14 and 15. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel as a result of the ministry that, he, that came upon his life that day. 3,000 people got saved or baptized. Soon after that, in Acts uh, 3, 6, we find that they go up to pray. And there's a man that's been laid there crippled. Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have. Give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, arise and be healed. A man who was crippled from birth, now walking, leaping and praising God. What an amazing demonstration of God's healing power. What an atmosphere. Peter and John, their emotions would have been on a high. Hallelujah. Nothing can stop us now. This is a move of God. I know in our church, in this church here, from time to time we've, we've had what, what I call just an outstanding presence of God that comes in. And you think, this is it. <laughs> it might happen for two or three weeks. And, and man, you know, last year we had over uh, 45 people at the prayer meeting. And, and we're there, we're thinking, man, this is it. This is it. Hallelujah. Revival's hit. Let's believe for 50. And all of a sudden, the enemy comes in and brings down the curtain and things start to change. And then you get disappointed and you get discouraged. See, we're all human. What are you going to do? You're going to fight. No, that's where you've got to speak strong. It's where you've got to where you've got to not pull back, but you've just got to keep going. And, and here, here's Peter and John and the rest of them there. They're on a high. Nothing can stop us. We're on a move of God. Next minute, they're being severely threatened. They're in jail. They're told not to use the name of Jesus again. The leaders of the synagogue, they're pastors. There are people there that, that they've gone day after day to the synagogue and listen to these people share and preach and minister. And, and now all of a sudden, these people, are, these leaders are so angry. It was their pastors. Just remember if your best friend or even myself or somebody else gives you bad advice, it'll still kill you. You've got to be careful. You've got to know. You've got to have, stand on your own two feet at times with God. One minute rejoicing, the great miracle, now they're in jail. They could have given up, but instead of submitting to their emotions and to the threats of the religious leaders and the magistrate, Peter rose up full of the Holy Spirit. He was overshadowed and overpowered by God. He spoke, not necessarily but to men, but to the spirit world. And that's what you've got to understand today. My father, say if Tom hurt me, my fight is not with Tom. My fight is with the spirit world. I don't fight people. I can't fight people. It's the spirit world that uses people. And we've got to understand that. 
Otherwise, all that happens is there's church splits and church fights and church messes. I've had people when I've been preaching, they say, when you said that, you looked at me. I should preach with sunglasses on. Now, the interesting thing is that somebody on the other side of the room come up to me at the same time and said, when you said that, you looked at me. So I, must, I don't know how I did that, but anyhow. Our fight is in the realm of the Spirit. Peter rose up full of the Holy Spirit and was overshadowed by the power of God. He spoke not necessarily to men but to the spirit world, not allowing his emotions to rule and cause him to quit. You've got to remember Peter, when Jesus was crucified, he looked at the rest of them and said, I'm going fishing. <laughs> I'm out of here. His natural man has the ability to do that. Your natural man has the ability to quit. Your spirit man does not have the ability to quit. And if we just keep in the natural, we'll quit. But if we keep in the spirit, we will rule and reign in life with Jesus Christ. Do you believe that today? He rose up and drew on the anointing and pushed back that which was trying to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. A lot of things will try to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. In Acts 16, verse 19, Paul cast a demon out of a girl. He set her free. This girl was demon-possessed. He set her free. But in Acts 16, 23, it says this, And when they had laid many stripes in the, on them, they threw them into prison. Johnny pushed the wrong button. <laughs> Look out, I'm like one of those dancing dolls that start that and I... <laughs> 60. When they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them in prison. Like this wasn't just a, just a nice... They actually whipped them in the back, 39 stripes most probably. Their backs were bleeding. They were in pain. They're, they're, they were in stocks. All they did was something good. I don't know, there would not be anybody else here that's ever said this, I did something good and got a bad result. <laughs> All I did was try to help them. And I got a bunch of fires. <laughs> I blew the horn of that person this morning that was driving slow and they did not appreciate it. I was just trying to help them. <laughs> <laughs> verse 25 says but at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang hymns to God you see that which the enemy meant for bad God turned for good if you can turn the tide and start to get into the realm of the spirit and cause what will cause heaven to come down around your life start to ignore the facts that this is what's going on but I'm going to praise God anyhow I'm just going to worship God anyhow. There's nothing much I can do about the stripes. I've already got them. Nothing much I can do about my feet being in stocks. But there's one thing I can do. I can praise God. And they begin to worship God. And they begin to praise God. And they begin to sing praises to God. Suddenly, verse 26 says, There was a great earthquake, and all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loose. Not only was Paul and Silas loose from their stocks, everyone in the prison, their chains were loose, amen. Might be what Jack was talking about today, chains around people's necks, chains of bondage, things there the enemies bound them with. The jailer and his family were saved. I want to remind you of this verse in verse 31. God's promise to you is this. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you and your household will be saved. Many are the afflictions of the righteous but the Lord delivers us out of them all. If we fall into straight, Satan's 
trap and whinge and complain while we go down the gurgler? Why did God allow this to happen to me? Going down the roads of regret. Why not rise up and find what the enemy meant for bad, God can turn for good? You know, can I say this? A lot of our families are not in church or loving Jesus today because they see the weaknesses in our lives. When you get free, when you really get free, when, when there's freedom around your life, when, when God can get in there and, and you can rise above the circumstances and rise above the problems and rise above those things that, that so easily beset us and cunning, Satan's cunning devices, and you start to live victorious and you start to rule and reign, I want to tell you there's nothing more attractive than somebody that's on fire for God. There's nothing more drawing than somebody that's on fire for God. That's what attracts us, amen? I remember I went to a church one time and I was talking about, there was this man, he was very big. He was very big. He was a big boy. And, and, uh, and, I, and I, I, I was a bit cheeky in those days. And I, and I walked up to this man. I said, excuse me, I'll walk up to Millie. She won't be upset about it. I said, uh, I said by the way, uh, I'm going to lunch with you today. <laughs> you look like somebody that knows how to eat. And he looked at me and said, yeah. He said, I'm on a diet. I said, you're on a diet? I said, well, anyhow, I said, I'll come with you. He took me to this place. And he was on a diet, and he got ribs. And the ribs were that far over his plate. <laughs> he decided. And I said, oh, man, I come to the right house. <laughs> I was attracted by it. No, anyway, get away. Nothing. Can you understand? It's contagious. You get with a happy person, you can get happy. You're attracted to their joy. You're attracted. I, I, look, this morning, I was just watching people at the back of the hall there. We had a group of people at the back of the hall, and there's a young lady dancing. And, and, and man, that, that's, that's beautiful, amen. I, I want to run up the back and get in, get in there too. Won't be too long, and everybody will be up the back of the church. <laughs> Get full of hope. Get contagious, amen. People, that's what draws people, amen. That's what will draw people. Many of us here today, I believe that God wants to raise us up and, and, and do something dynamic in our lives and break the chains and smash the fetters. How many people believe today that we need some things broken off our lives? Eh? Come on. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Let's, let's just pray. Father, 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 when we get the victory, it automatically sets those around us free. When people see us living in freedom and that victory, Lord, well, they'll, they'll want that victory. They don't want the mully grubs. They don't want the misery Christians. They don't want the people there that are up and down like yo-yos. They want people there that, that know their God and know the power of the resurrection. And Lord, please help us. Help us, Father. Help us to live in the victory. Help us when the enemy comes in like a flood. You promised us that you would raise up a standard against him. Let, let not our emotions pull us down into that, that gully, into that pit. But Lord, let, let the Spirit of God rise up within us and let us start to declare the goodness of our God. Let us start to declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We can pull down strongholds, smash strongholds, break in chains in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we'll just give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. Lord, help us this day to, to, to catch, catch the fire of God. 
God, you're in the fire. You're in the fire. You're in the fire. Oh, give me a wave today if you want to catch the fire. Come on, give me a wave. Father, go on, wave to Jesus. God, we want to catch the fire. We want to see the power of God. We want to see the anointing come like, like that rushing mighty wind again. We want to see the flood of God. Lord, touch every one of us in Jesus' name today. And we'll give you all the praise, give you all the glory. Amen and amen. I want to pray for some people here this morning. Number one, I want to pray for somebody that's got a problem with your right ankle. Your right ankle. Who's that person? I'd love to pray with you this morning. You might not have got here this morning because of the traffic jam. <laughs> but I, God spoke to me about this, uh, uh, this while I was preparing this message. Here's that person quickly. You've got a problem with your right ankle. Come on, Johnny. Amen. There's somebody also here uh, right at the back of your neck, right, right in there. Right, I suppose it's the center, the top of your, your, your backbone, right there. There's, you, you suffer with pain. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And, and I want to pray for people with back problems this morning as well. I believe that there's an anointing here to help people with back problems. Amen. How many people really want the fire today? If you want the fire, I want you to come over this side. Just push that thing out of the road with your tongue. If you want the fire, come over this side. We're going to believe for God to touch us this morning. Uh, touch us. We're going to believe for God. You want the fire? <laughs> the fire. <laughs> fire. She, now, look, that's interesting. She wants the fire more than she wants the ankle fixed. <laughs> Amen. Come on out. Come on. God bless you. Come on. Come on. Come on. 